I got fired from Frasier. The one everyone knew was going to be a hit, and it was. The next day, my biggest source of support had to move to New York to start work on his show Late Night with Conan O'Brien, and so my best friend was gone too. This time, it was really hard not to think that it wasn't meant to be my career as an actress. It was so embarrassing. Jim Burroughs and those producers had to fire me. They were nice, but well, it's just not working and we need to replace you. Okay, sure, no, don't feel bad. <laughs> but didn't they know how hard I worked to finally become good at auditioning? That I had gotten over the being an actress issue and embraced it? That was hard for me. <laughs> this was my shot. I cried a lot. Then I got a call from a friend, uh, the actor Richard Kind, who I'd met when I had guest starred on an episode of Mad About You, starring Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt, who said, and this is exactly how he sounds, I heard what happened. I don't know how you get up in the morning. <laughs> how do you even get out of bed, get dressed, walk out the door and show your face? That just made me laugh. That was crazy. I was getting up in the morning and leaving my apartment, so maybe I was coping better than I was expected to. That's a good sign. The best words were from Robin Schiff, who wrote the play Ladies' Room, and later would write and produce the movie Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, which I was in. Well, I don't know, you know. She said, I know it's hard to believe, but when one door closes, another door always opens. It really does. Yeah, I know. I had heard that very clever saying before. Yeah. She was right. I didn't believe it. But I never forgot it. A couple of months later, I was almost completely out of money. And my agent called to tell me that Danny Jacobson, the producer of Mad About You, was offering me another small role on the show. The agent was recommending I pass on it because it was too small a role and the character didn't even have a name. It was for the part of waitress and I wouldn't even see the part till I got to the set in an hour. Get there in an hour. Don't take it. They can't treat you like this. I didn't even think twice. Of course, I took it. Whatever it is, I'll make it funny. I'll listen and respond and make it funny. By the second day, Danny Jacobson asked if I would be okay with being written into at least five more shows throughout the season. I told him I was okay with that. <laughs> Some people thought I was funny as the waitress, ultimately named Ursula on Mad About You. One of them was one of their talented writers named Jeffrey Cleric. Jeffrey's boyfriend was named David Crane, who recommended I come in to read for his new show about six twenty-somethings who lived in New York and hung out at a coffee house. After many auditions, I was the second person cast in the pilot called Friends Like Us, which would later be changed to Friends. Jim Burroughs also directed this pilot and the first 10 episodes of Friends. One day, the six of us were talking with Jimmy, exchanging the time I got fired stories. And Jimmy told them mine. <laughs> well, she's got the worst one of all. She got, she got fired from Frasier. <laughs> you were right for the part, darling. Thanks. Well, it's a good thing you got fired or you wouldn't have been on this show. He was right. And it was a good thing I didn't get Saturday Night Live. And that Romy and Michelle, that that pilot didn't work out. And every other disappointment that happened. They were actually more like guideposts that kept me on my path. Oh, and after I got fired from Fra Frasier, I went to a birthday party and feeling like I had nothing at all to lose, I flirted with a guy who was way out of my league. We dated, and on Thursday, Michelle and I will have been married for 15 years. Yeah, that is the biggest achievement, it is. And we'll celebrate with our remarkable 12-year-old son. So 
thank God I got fired. Maybe there is a reason for everything. I think there is.